Welcome back, Sergey fans, to another exhibition match. I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we have a match between Jasper and Anir on Fairyland. It's a replay from a couple days ago. I realize there's an event going on right now, and I, if I weren't, weren't busy and was aware of it beforehand, I would cast it, but I'm quite busy, so I just don't really have time. Anyway, Jasper going for Shieldbot Factory, and Anir also going for the Shieldbot Factory. So we have Shield versus Shield. A classic matchup. Well, actually, I don't know, it's a mirror match for... I guess a typical bot thing. Like, shield bots are not uncommon. They're just kind of a thing that you don't see a whole lot of in like, both players picking them. Like, I don't know. I Cloaky versus shield I see more often. But hey, shields are good. So Bandit coming in from Anir, trying to set that up. Jasper, on the other hand, going in with very, very quick expansion. Like Bandit, Bandit Protected Convict, but basically Jasper just wants to get a very fast expansion. Went for the proxy factory themselves. Making sure they have that opening section. Because right... Like, the way that they have it set up, I think, is quite smart. Because you kind of see the direct path between the two bases runs right through this section where the factory has been built. So I can see why Jasper is doing that. Makes a lot of sense. Anir, on the other hand, is going for a little bit more of a direct raiding play from the center. Making it a little bit easier for them to defend, but also making it a little bit harder for them to actually expand out as we're seeing Jasper is just able to get going quite quickly even though they actually aren't that far ahead economically now that I think about it only like 14 by 14 yeah that's kind of the downside of starting out like this is that mid game it's a little bit easier to expand we're seeing Jasper starting to get up the Jasper should be able to get to plus 20 faster but Anir got a much quicker start just because that center that center base that's got the three and four very easily depending on where where you place your commander, and that's exactly what happened. At the same time, Anir, I mean, they're, oh, they're able to harass quite nicely. Jasper should be able to defend against this. Although the bandit, the bandit from Jasper, no, is not able to defend. The second bandit comes in here, but Anir, on point with that micro, does lose the bandit, but gets a free kill off of it, too. And at the same time, Anir continuing to come in and harass, while Jasper, I mean, they have this build up, and it is quite quick, and they are in a good position to rebuild. And again, mid-game it's going to work, but Jasper may not last to the mid-game at the way this is going. I'm really not entirely sure how this is going to work, because Jasper, they have the commander, they have the two other metal extractors, they have... Like I said, they have a... Well, they would have an economic advantage if they weren't raided out as much, but they are being raided out. That's exactly what Anir's doing. And ultimately, Anir... How are they actually... Oh, reclaim. Yeah, that's true. That makes sense. Thinking, how are they getting more metal? Like, ah, uh, yeah. They're reclaiming stuff. That would make sense. Jasper, however, also upgrading their commander. Being there. Oh, they're going to come in. Oh, I see what they might be doing. What did they upgrade with? Machine gun. Okay, so they might be coming in and trying to harass out here, too, as we do have Minor Thug Law coming in to start getting rid of some metal extractors. Harass a near back a little bit. Keep Jasper in that economic advantage. Of course, the bandit's going over to the north. i passing that outlaw completely. There's nothing here. Oh, there's one outlaw near the base. That actually is going to work. That outlaw comes in, slows down the bandits. And it's, the bandits will be able to take out the lotus before that happens, though. So it's kind of tricky. The bandit's coming in here. Lotus does take out one of them, possibly two. But that's not enough. Jasper coming in with even more harassment. And the bandits do have an escape route. And there was nothing done to stop that. That is always the tricky thing with this game, is that... When you're trying to deal with faster units, you do kind of have to predict where they're going to go. Of course, Jasper already in position to stop the bandits. If, oh, if the commander was only just close enough, jump in! I know it seems kind of stupid, jump in! Stop the bandits from killing your metal extractors, Jasper. You are ahead and by economy, and you desperately need to be ahead by economy if you want to be able to do anything. And Jasper finally jumping in to help deal with this stuff. Might be able to, Yeah, okay, starts actually being able to reclaim and rebuild. But that is still kind of tricky. Like, reclaiming and rebuilding is... It's important. But it may not be enough. Oof. And there it goes, though. We still have Anir coming in with more harassment force. They have that felon. They have the outlaw. They have Jasper kind of on the ropes economically. And split a bit, too, across the map. I mean, Jasper's doing a decent job, but they need to actually force Anir to come back, and I don't think Anir cares. This this assault force, Anir is confident they can work with. 
And if they get rid of this other felon, there's not a whole lot that Jasper can do. Jasper, at the same time, trying to find some kind of point they can attack just to get damage in there. Maybe force Anir to retreat, but I don't see that happening. I mean, that felon there, it's not happy. He's not having a good time. That felon cannot attack anything due to lack of shields. And the outlaw coming in here might be able to do something. No, the outlaw's not able to do much. Jasper able to defend reasonably well, but at the same time, Jasper not able to assault reasonably well. Anir maintaining that economic advantage. They are actually the only downside. They aren't really producing as much. Oops. Now they have 25-ish metal per second going into their factory. Yeah, 25 metal per second going into the factory. Compared to 40 metal per second for Jasper. So Jasper, they can reclaim, they can overdrive, they can do a lot of stuff and still have all of their metal being used. Anir, on the other hand, kind of can't. So, yeah, that is a bit of an issue. And that's... That's going to be a bit of a problem. Like, Anir... They're the, oh, actually, I don't know. Anir... Maybe not so much. Jasper able to take out some of this expansion over the north. Still maintain a reasonably good contain. So it's not like it's impossible. It's just going to be kind of difficult. While at the same time, Anir... I mean, I don't know what you're going to have... I don't know really what Jasper can do about this. Because Anir's coming in here with some more banish to be able to get rid of this Lotus. But again, Jasper... I don't know. Jasper's holding on. Really can't fault him for that. The only downside is that Jasper hasn't really been rebuilding over here over the eastern side of the map. But otherwise... Jasper's been holding on remarkably well. So, yeah, that is... Hmm. That is a thing to bear in mind. I, yeah, I'm trying to think of what to say here because honestly, it's... It really just comes down to whether or not Anir actually decides to go for this and is able to take out anything, or whether or not Jasper, upon baiting them out, is able to actually break everything on the other side. And really, Jasper continues to just maintain this light advantage, but it's such it's such small scale stuff. Like it, honestly, the only downside there is that Anir lost. I think I didn't hit the stars. The stars can't hit them, but Anir kind of lost a lot when it came to their shields. Having lost those shields, they lost their main firepower, the Felon. And having lost that firepower, they've kind of lost everything else. But, yeah, I don't know. I just... Yeah, I don't know. Still, Jasper maintaining the rest of the map. They're taking control. Containing a near. And short of something really tricky, which the snitch might be. That seems to be a near's main hope right now. Get that snitch in there. Don't lose it in your force. <laughs> that's the one thing. Like, don't let that snitch blow up inside your entire shield ball, because that's going to be game. But used properly. I don't know, because Outlaw's kind of counter snitch, so I don't see Jasper falling for that. In fact, I see that possibly being a problem. More snitch is being built up just for that extra little bit of damage, extra little bit of firepower. So, yeah. I... I don't know. However, they haven't spotted. Jasper knows exactly what's going on. They know that Anir is trying to do something tricky with this. But again, Outlaw's already in play. So what is this niche going to do? I mean, it stops a bandit from raiding. That's not great value, to be honest. Although now we're seeing the moment of truth. Bandit does go forward, does not see the snitch. Snitch actually able to get in, deal a significant amount of damage to the shield ball. That wasn't nothing, but it wasn't really enough to make it worth it. Same time, Jasper Southeast expansion being assaulted heavily, and really this is now the time. Jasper, just go in. Just go for it. There's nothing that's going to stop you. You have the larger force. You've had the larger economy this entire game. You can just go for it and win. There's not a whole lot of near can do. They're taking out the Southeast. But otherwise, there's not a whole lot. The Racketeers are at least doing some work. But again, they have to get through the shields first. And the shields are doing a great job being just replenished for the sheer number of shielded units in play right now. So honestly, Anir is just kind of in trouble. Their entire force is out of position. Jasper can start wiping out everything that's been built up. There is nothing here that's going to stop anyone from being built up. A couple snitches coming in, at least weakening the shield ball, weakening 
the actual HP a little bit, but it's it's too little too late. There are too many felons. There's too many support shields. I mean, the damage has been done. Jasper able to get in here and start wiping out Anir's entire force. Anir should probably have realized that their force being out front does keep does make them wide open to attack, but sadly for them, they did not, and that is going to be it. Jasper should be able to take this game with a very nice, very well-timed assault there. It really was a timing attack. Anir's forces are entirely out of position. Jasper's able to wipe out Anir's entire base in the back line. There's not a whole lot that Jasper can do. And that is going to be it. Anir with a polite little GG as the game ends and Jasper takes it. Very convincingly. So yeah, that was that. Well done by Jasper. Good use of that strong economy early on. Like I said, in the mid-game, it would really benefit them, and indeed it did. Allowing them to get that larger force, and despite the fact that Anir was doing a decent job harassing and expanding themselves, never really managed to quite catch up. So yeah, good job you. Anyway, that is going to be it for me tonight. Sorry it's a bit short, but I am kind of busy today. So thank you all for watching, and hope you enjoyed that. And until next time, have a good night.